Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as some of you will know, we've been having a series of public meetings for people in the Port Hills over the last few weeks. Um, we've talked to about 2,000 people. Um, we've got another one of those uh, public meetings tonight in Littleton. And we've been talking about the work we've been doing to try and understand more about um, the rockfall hazard and the cliff clap hazards in the Port Hills. And up until now, um, the land zoning to do with rockfall has been done by engineers walking around and making observations or engineers looking at maps and saying, gee, a rock here, if it falls, is going to end up here. Gee, this area is potentially unsafe. Or looking at a map and going, gee, rocks are here, they're going to end up here. So the work we're now doing is much more precise to try and understand where these rocks um, are going to go. So what we're going to talk about today is a really detailed computer model that has been built and it very precisely knows where the rocks are. It really precisely knows the topography and what the land really looks like. There's a very detailed computer model of that. It knows where roads are because they tend to stop rocks. It knows how hard and soft the ground is because hard and soft ground rocks will bounce or not bounce depending on it's hard or soft. And from that you work out much, much more accurately where rocks are going to go. Um, it's a really massive computer program. It's a sort of program that takes you know, a whole day to run or hours and hours of running just to look at a single area. Um, and as that work is completed, we'll then be able to announce rezoning for properties over these next three and a bit months. Um, I think some people have said at some of these meetings, you know, we've had 10,000 earthquakes um, since September the 4th. I haven't had a rock through my, near my place, I must be okay. And while we hope there aren't going to be any more significant events, we have to plan on the fact there might be. And we've actually only had four really proper shakes so far. And if those four next shakes happen area in a different area, closer to where some of these houses are, or the shaking comes from a different direction, that's what we're trying to understand, where will those rocks go. So without any further ado, I'll now hand over to Dr Jan Kupek, who is our um, Chief Geotech Engineer here at CERA and his colleague um, Camilla Gibbons who works for URS, who works for Oricon and, and they will, sorry, and, they, and they're going to give you a more detailed briefing about what we've got here. Thank you. Welcome Jan. Thanks Roger. Good day, Dr Jan Kupitz, I'm the Chief Geotechnical Engineer at CERA and um, I'll just provide you a very brief background of what's actually happening on the Port Hills to give you an understanding what tools we actually have and what information will become shortly available to us. Behind me are actually two studies. So the Crash City Council commissioned GNS and international peer reviewers and uh, experts to commission a study which essentially is based on risk. So one of the fundamental outcomes out of a study, which is done on a suburb wide scale, is actually risk contours. And these risk contours have to be ground truth. And for this one, I ask actually Kamala Gibbons from Oricon to actually assist me. She's working for the Port Hills Geotechnical Group, which is an entity set up by the Crash City Council to explain a bit more in detail what actually the ground through thing for Rockfall is all about. Kamal, over to you. So we've uh, been, the ground truthing is essentially checking the, the GNS report. Um, the inputs to the report, such as the topography and, and all sorts, the, the boulder locations, um, we're, we're taking the GNS report and going around house by house to the affected areas and, and ch essentially checking, checking the inputs, looking uphill um, and, and seeing if the risk that GNS have um, assigned is we agree with or whether we don't. Thanks. Look, one of the key difficulties with risks is that it's very, very difficult to actually use it in a daily term. If I say to you, the room over here is 20 meter tall, you will know straight away that actually that is not true, because you know what metric measurements are. If I tell you, you are likely to die at a certain uh, probability again, you may not have a reference whether this is a really dangerous area or it isn't. Okay. Now, 
Sierra commissioned a different type of work, a different type of study by a company called Geovert, which is a crash hit based company working in Asia Pacific. And um, Geovert is working with Freefall, a specialist rockfall modeling company from Austria. And um, these two companies working together with the University of Milan, which actually has the black box, which does the calculation, and has the mainframe, which can actually run all the numerical processing. The output is different, but both studies, both the GNS study and the GeoVert study, have similar inputs, but different outputs. Now, basically, what the study actually does, if you can see over here, it models the terrain as a 3D simulation using a high-resolution LiDAR studies, which actually have been captured and then actually models the rockfall as a debris avalanche coming down. And it actually does consider, to a high degree, the presence of roads, the presence of buildings, and it can be modeled actually the presence of uh, topography on top of it as well. So one quick example over here is, in this particular instance, the road actually does act as a barrier and prevents any further rockfall. In this particular instance, the rock um, actually go well past it because the terrain is much steeper. So the rocks actually continue all the way down here. Similarly, so we can actually model the presence of houses, which actually we do know from experience, they act as barriers and actually protect houses below it. So this is one of the outputs which we do. Okay? As Roger hinted, it takes about for an area of like Wakefield Avenue, which is about two kilometer long, about 24 hours on a university mainframe to actually do the computation. And the computation actually looked like this. So what we have, and this is actually the data taken from the Wakefield Avenue, and it's based on the November 2011 data when we actually started to procure this study. Okay? And this study can actually go both suburb wide and down to specific house level. In these colors, what is represented in red are actually the corridors where rocks are likely to actually travel down to. So the darker the color, the higher likelihood you actually are in a rockfall path. Okay? And that can be resolved on different levels of accuracy. One of the key things which we're getting feedback from the community is obviously you are running all these numerical studies and all these fancy things, which many of them are world's first. What do you do first? Do you rely on the engineers doing the assessment or do you trust the numerical study? And actually it's both. First of all, we do actually correlate what the engineers observed in the field. And to this aspect, all these dots over here in pink Actually, the boulders which were recorded by the Portals Geotechnic Group as part of the data gathering exercise over the last 12 months. Okay? In green is actually the area which the 3D model predicts rock will travel to. Okay? Now, as you can see, not all the rocks actually went that far down. We had, as Roger said, four events. Not all of these events showing all the rocks loose that are there as in the source area. So there's a possibility that actually more rocks can come down. Now, as you can see, there's a really good correlation over here. I just want to draw back to this area over here. You can see in here, there's a good correlation between the rocks that were found and the rocks that were modeled. Now over here, you can actually see there are no rocks. The reason is very simple. No one was game to actually go there. Okay, so data was not collected, but it predicts that rocks would be there. So part of the ground truthing from our side is to actually determine whether rocks actually have landed over there.